gathering for social, social, we are gathering because of social life. But that is not what Paul is talking about. Paul is talking about Christ crucified. We are talking about Jesus Christ being crucified. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ has been crucified for your life for a particular reason. He saved your life. He made you to come closer to him. He died because he wants you to be saved. He died because he wants you to go to heaven. He died because he wants you to be set free from the hands of the enemy. We were bound with sins. We were bound with the hands of the enemy. We were locked up in a particular place that we could not express ourselves. But Christ came for us. He delivered us from every trouble that we were going through. He delivered us. He made a way where there seems to be no way. When our backs were against the wall, Christ took us out from that place. Hallelujah. We are preaching Christ crucified. Amen. Amen. We should not forget the reason why we are coming to church. We should not forget the reason why we are coming every day here. So many of us who have left the reasons why we are coming to church behind. We have put other things before. All other, other things have crowded our mind. There are so many people that come to church just because they want to come and meet friends. There are other people that come to church just because they want to come and have a conversation. There are people that are coming to church for so many reasons. But today I want to announce to you that when you come to church, you are coming to meet Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody that want to have a relationship with him. Somebody that want to talk to. Somebody that want to commune with. That is our reason of being here. There is not any other reason. It's all about Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We have lived too much in our flesh that we don't even hear the voice of God again. We have lived too much in our flesh that we don't even hear what God is talking to us. Paul said something that I've come to know him. I thought Paul was the one who has written one third of the New Testament. If he made the statement that I want to know him, he be crucified. I want to have fellowship with his death. I want to have fellowship with his suffering. Paul was the one who wrote that New Testament, which means that Paul was not satisfied. If Paul could not be satisfied with him knowing Jesus Christ, what about me and you? What about me and you? We take pleasure in so many things, but we don't take pleasure in being in the presence of God. We don't take pleasure in serving the Lord. We don't take pleasure in having a relationship with him. Hallelujah! Today, whatever I am today, or whatever you are today, it is all about Jesus. If you know that you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, the Holy Spirit will speak into your heart. The Holy Spirit will convict you that you cannot stay without having a relationship with Him. You cannot stay without communing with Him. And how do you commune with your God? How do you have a relationship with your God? How do you have it? I don't know whether you have ever sat and thought about yourself without you staying, without praying for a particular hour, without fellowshiping with your brothers and sisters in the Lord, without worshiping the Lord, without serving Him, how do you? It is difficult, I've said it over and over, it is difficult for you to communicate with somebody when you don't have a relationship with the person. It is difficult. You must come closer to that person. You must know that person very well. And that person will not ever give you ear if you don't have a relationship with him or her. Hallelujah. So if we want to have, if we want to know that God is living with us, we are doing what we are doing. We have to have, we have to cultivate a relationship with Jesus Christ. We have to cultivate the relationship with Jesus Christ, and this cultivation of a relationship with Jesus Christ is not a one-time matter. It's not a one-time thing. It's over and over again. You being in the presence of God, you relating with Him, you communicating with Him, and how do you communicate with Him? You pray. You listen to His words. He speaks to you, and you speak back to Him. Amen. Amen. Let our feelings don't dominate the Spirit of God. Let the Holy Spirit live a life in us. Whatever we are doing here, if I dress well, I dress for the glory of God. Yeah. If I am rich, I am rich because Christ has said that he was, he was rich, but he became poor because of me. So that I might become rich. Hallelujah. Yeah. For us to meet his glory, for us to see what he is doing in our lives. He said that I will not leave you nor forsake you because he wants to have a relationship with you. If Jesus Christ said that I will not leave you to forsake you, we are the one running away from him. We are running away from God. But he is chasing us. He said, come and let us reason together. Come and let us reason together. If he is calling you, it means that he loves you. He wants you to come to him. Let's reason together. Amen. Amen. And until you come to him, you reason with him before you get the revelation of who he is. We can 
cannot stop preaching Christ crucified. When we stop preaching Christ crucified, we are letting others to go to hell. Paul said he was amongst you with weakness, in fear, in much trembling. Though in weakness, though in fear and in trembling, he still preached Jesus Christ. Some of us might be sitting here, I'm afraid to do it. I cannot do it. I am afraid. The Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of sound mind. All of us, we can do, the Bible says that we can do all this through Christ who strengthens us. And if we can do it, how do we do it? We start somewhere. We start somewhere. If we fear, we back up, then nothing will happen. There are gifts that is being passed in us. There are gifts that is left in us. Don't mind. Until you step out of it or out of your comfort zone before you can get what you can get. God, God can use you. Until you avail yourself, God cannot use you. But if you avail yourself with humility, I'm telling you there is nothing that God cannot do for you. There is nothing that God cannot use you to do. Amen. Amen. Paul says that I was not with persuasive words of human wisdom. But the wisdom of God and the power of God that works in Him, it is the power of God that works in us that we can do what we are doing. The verse 5 says that your faith should not be in wisdom of men, but in the power of God. We have depended a lot on people. We have trusted, we have put our trust on men, our confidence in men. But they have failed us at the end of the day. But today I am announcing to you that as you put your trust in God, you shall never be disappointed. Amen. Hallelujah. As you look unto God, as you click on Him, as you have a relationship with Him, you shall never be disappointed. Amen. Yeah. Our faith should not fail us. Amen. Amen. We have put our confidence in men. We have put our trust in men. We are going the, way, the, the world's way. Paul says that I don't have the wisdom. The world's wisdom, I will not take the world's wisdom. What is the world's wisdom? I have a very good friend. She's just like a family member to us. The world will not tell us that we should go to places that it entice us. We should do what the things the world is doing. We should compare ourselves with one another. That is the world's wisdom that is telling us. This friend of mine, she is very generous, very nice, very good. She can give, she can bend her body for you. She talks Christ, she talks Jesus Christ very well. But can you imagine? This girl has money. She, has, she can go and borrow money to go to Dubai to go and spend. With all everybody that she wants to pay, drinking everything that she wants to drink, and she was also inviting me. If it happened that I was still living in the flesh, I stepped my feet inside, the whole world would have seen me today. That is the world wisdom. But because I stepped my, my feet outside of it, maybe they will not look me as somebody. But I am going somewhere. If I have Christ in me, I have to have a relationship with Him. I will not walk the world's way. Hallelujah. I will not walk the world's way. They send those people that they are calling you to do what they are doing. They say those people, the day you want to preach Christ to them, those people will quote you. I, look, I thought you are a child of God. I thought you are a born again. The world wisdom. Paul says that I'm not preaching, I'm not preaching the world wisdom. I'm preaching Christ. Christ crucified. And if Christ is crucified in you, you know that Christ died for you. You come out of the world's wisdom. Amen. You walk the world, you walk the world's way. Hallelujah. Family. It is high time for all of us, if you know you are a born again, if you know you have given your life to Jesus Christ, it's high time for you to fix your eyes on Jesus. It's high time for you to communicate with Him. It's high time for you to have a relationship with Him. Hallelujah. Amen. There is no two ways. The world will not be the same as it was. It will not be the same. Every day we are hearing new story. Every day we are hearing new story. It was first vaccine two times, but now we are hearing that you have to take the third vaccine. Where is the world going to? What are you talking about, your Muslim? If it happened that we all slept one day, they said that coronavirus, everything stopped. If it happened that Jesus Christ came that day, where are you going to be? Where are you going to find yourself? No relationship with Him. Nothing. Let us sit and down and ask ourselves questions. It's not what is, we, we, we have to feel about, it's not what we are going to have. But where are we going to be at the end of the day? When it comes today, are you going to be? Are you going to be prepared to meet him? Are you going to stand and answer? Are you? Let's ask ourselves. Let's preach Christ crucified. Amen. Amen. We have to show our life as Christians. We have to make a difference. We have to differentiate ourselves with them.
let Christ be the center of our lives. Let Jesus be the reason why we gather every Sunday. Let him be the center. We have to come to make Jesus know. I said that it's not a coincidence that we gather together. It's not a coincidence that I met Jeremiah, I met Henry and the family. It's not a coincidence that we met ourselves together. But Christ had a purpose for us to come together. And if we miss that purpose, we have missed it all. All of us, we have missed it, if we missed it. If we don't do what he has called us to do, we have missed it. And we are going to find ourselves to answer those questions. We have to preach Christ crucified. All other things, when we preach Christ crucified, all other things will take their place. Let us determine that we have to save Christ. Let us determine that we want to grow in our spiritual life. Let us take a giant step for us to move forward in our spiritual life. Paul was determined to see Christ crucified, to preach Christ crucified and Christ alone. Daniel was determined not to eat the king's food in the king's palace. Even though death was promising, he determined that I will not bow before their gods. I will not eat their food. They promised him death, but he did not give up. Let us determine. It is all about you. It's all about for your good. The Bible says that life and death lies in your, in your power. God has said that he is going to ask us at the day, at the end of the day, when you come before his presence, all the life that he gave to you, what did you do with it? And you are going to answer is Christ the center in everything that you do? Is Christ the center in your life? Paul said, I may know him. I thought he knew, he knew God. I thought he knew Christ. But he did not know him. He wanted to know more. Knowing him or having a relationship with him is not a one-time experience, as I said. It's not us just coming to church and going back. Knowing him should be a deliberate action. We should focus on what we are doing. Knowing him is making us to know that he died for our sins. He died to pay that price for me and you. He died to set us free. He died to liberate you from every suffering that you are going through. He died to take you out from the hands of the enemy. We have to know him. Wanting to know him, it will give you a revelation power. Having the revelation power, it will cause you to have a relationship with him. And having a relationship with him will bring you to that place that he wants you to be. It's not about our English. It's not about our, our all knowing. It's about our availability. And if you avail yourself to him as empty you are, he is going to fill you. He is going to fill you. He cannot leave you like that. He's going to fill you. There are times when we are too full of ourselves. Pride has taken us. Pride. Pride has caused some of us to have missed the mark. So many people have died because of pride. And they died without knowing Jesus Christ. Let us leave pride down. The Bible says that if we humble ourselves before Him, He is going to lift us up. Let humility be the reason also that we are serving the Lord Jesus Christ. And as you serve Him, He is going to make a way for you. I see somebody in this particular place. In the person said that I missed it one time. I missed it. Maybe this is an opportunity for you to turn back again. If you are here, you have never confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. There are so many people in the church that they are in the church every now and then, but they have never ever made that decision that they want to follow Christ all their lives. Today is that day. Jesus Christ is the center of our country. He is all, it is all about Him. If you have never ever made that decision, please don't leave this place without me giving your life to Christ. Don't leave this place. It's all about Jesus Christ. The world will never be the same again. It will never be the same again. Let us not be caught into the trap. If you have never ever made that decision, that Christ come and be the center of my life, I want to give you that opportunity. Every head bow, believe us praying in the spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I've seen so many people carry Bible, but at the end of the day, they regret that I carry that Bible. I don't know what it was meaning, it was the meaning of that Bible in my life. I carry that Bible, I did not know what it was telling me. I carry that Bible, but I missed it out. If you 
know you have never confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, the Lord is calling you now to make that decision. Don't be ashamed. On that day, that person that was beside you will not be there with you. Your mother will not be there with you. Your wife will not be there with you. Your sister will not be there with you. Your child will not be there with you. Your friend will not be there with you. You are going to answer it all alone. If you want to make that decision. If you want to make that decision. I did it some 20 years ago and I've never regretted it. My life has always been up. I've never ever regretted it. You want to slip up your hands and say, Lord, here I am. Take me as I am. You've never made giving your life to Christ. And if you have ever given your life to Christ by a venture and you slip back, you've never had that relationship with God. You've never got in that intimate relationship with Him, to fellowship with Him. Please don't leave this place. Don't leave this place. The Lord is speaking to you. He is speaking to you. You want to flip up your hands. We are here to pray with you. If you are backslided, we are here to pray with you. I said church is not a social gathering. It's a business of God. Hallelujah. It's a God's business. I thank God that everybody is here and that every head is being bowed down that they are born again. Father, I thank you. Lord, we just want to thank you for this particular moment in your presence, oh Lord. You that searches a heart deeper than any other thing. We have not come here because of any other thing, but because of you. Let you be the center of everything that we do. Let you be the center of every life in this house, oh Lord. Father, we pray and we pray that you prove your spirit upon them. You breathe upon them, oh Lord God. As they go back to their houses, you breathe upon them. Anything that they touch, you breathe upon them, oh Lord. In every area of their life, Father, breathe upon them. Father, manifest yourself upon the lives of your children. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we give you praise. Father, we give you all the honor. Father, we give you all the adoration. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's put our hands together. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Christ crucified. That was a powerful message. That's digging deep in the hearts, searching the souls, digging the bones and the marrows, touching the spirits in different ways. Amen. Amen. But I noticed that in this house, <laughs> clapping is dry. Amen. It's dry. What is happening? You 